Hi everyone, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another end of the year video where I talk about some of the goals that I had for myself, kind of. This one is concerning the books that I set aside as books that I thought would be five star reads for me at the beginning of the year. These are my five star predictions. There was 10 of them and let me tell you what they were first. So I had a Nest of Nightmares by Lisa Tuttle, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, The Shoemaker by Flora Retta Schreiber, Salvaged by Madeline Rue, The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, No Exit by Taylor Adams, The Descent by Jeff Long, The Cipher by Kathy Koja, and Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Now, Last year I did really good and I read all 10 of my books and this year I did pretty good. Um, there was one book that I have left and really if I really pushed myself to do it, I know I could finish it by the end of the month but we've got only a couple days left and unfortunately I just don't think I want to push myself to do it because you know it's just it's just a made up thing I <laughs> made for myself. You know I don't want to stress myself out because I'm in the middle of like a book. I have like 200 pages left in that. And plus I have two arcs that I really need to get to that I forgot about because they were on my Kindle and now I really would like to finish those out by the end of the year. So, so A Nest of Nightmares by Lisa Tuttle. This is a short story collection that was reprinted by Valancourt Books. And this one I just didn't get to this year. And that's okay. I read nine other ones. So I don't know if that would have been a five um star prediction or it was a prediction i don't know if it would have ended up being five stars for me anyways on to the next book the road by cormac mccarthy i've never read one of mccarthy's books before i picked this one up i've owned it for quite some time and i'm happy to say this was a five star read for me this is about a man and his son we don't even know their names and they are in a apocalyptic post-apocalyptic situation um, they're walking and trying to find somewhere safe to stay for the winter and things end pretty tragically. It's just very sad all around, like kind of depressing book, but it was so, so good. The next book I predicted would be a five-star read for me was The Shoemaker by Flora Rutta Schreiber. This was a nonfiction book, kind of, although it is well known that she took some liberties with her um, previous nonfiction book. Sybil about the woman who had like 47 personalities or something like that and um this was about Joseph Callinger who was a murderer and somebody who was just um I don't know he's just a really kind of a tragic figure someone that you feel bad for because you know that if he had gotten help at some point in his life it's very possible that this would not have turned out this way and he not only ruined his own life, he ruined his victims' lives and he ruined his family's lives, his children's lives. Um, he brought his children into his crimes and it was just really horrific. However, this took me forever to read. It took me for fucking ever to read. It was, it was a book where I had to be like, I had to like psych myself up to get into it. The writing was just really dense and this is basically only information that was given to her by Joseph Callinger. I'm sure she had some information from like the trial or whatever, but she didn't really interview any victims' families. She barely spoke of talking to his wife and his children. So it's just, I really just don't even know if much of this is true because um, Joseph Callinger was somebody who was severely mentally ill at the time of his crimes and afterwards he just it's just, you never know. You never know. <laughs> he called his penis his bird for like the first half of the book. It was terrible. Next was Savaged by Madeline Rue. And this is about a um, young woman who is sent to like clean up this spaceship that they believe the crew has died on and they want to clean up the ship and get it back to, I don't know, planet whatever, planet wherever she is. And um, it turns out that maybe it's not uninhabited when she gets to it. She's like a space janitor, kind of. 
Um, and I didn't love this. I thought it was very boring. It felt very, very long compared to its actual length, which can't be, I don't know, it's gotta be like maybe 320 pages, 350 pages. It took me a long time to read. I don't even remember any of the characters' names. I barely remember any of the characters except for the main character. And another beef I had with this is um, this young woman is apparently suffering from um, alcoholism and uh, the withdrawals of being an alcoholic. And that just didn't ring very accurate to me. Um, maybe this is something that the author hasn't really seen or dealt with firsthand because it's not quite like, alcohol withdrawals aren't just like, man, I could really use a drink. You know what I mean? Like they make you physically ill. Um, so I, I don't know, sometimes you have to be hospitalized just from um, not drinking. It's bad, it's not just craving a drink. Okay, on to my next book. This is The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson. This was a five star read for me. This is about kids in a small town, some teenagers in a small town, and these very strange things start happening where the um, children, the teenagers, are having these really strange, like explosive, rageful events and seriously harming people and themselves. And at first, you know, it's just kind of, the main character sees this firsthand and it just really seems like um, a, a one-off event that was really traumatic and and she feels traumatized by this, but she's at the end of her high school career and she, you know, wants to get through it and on with her life and she wants to hang out with her friends and stuff like that. And uh, at a party that they, her and her friends go to, things start to go really, really wrong and it becomes kind of an apocalyptic situation and there's some like creepy science fiction horror stuff happening in this. And I thought this was really good, especially I listened to this on Scribd and the narrator for this was so, so good. I would definitely recommend if you have not read this and really want to, um, I would definitely, definitely recommend uh, looking that up on Scribd. And if you don't have a Scribd subscription, you can use my link to get, I think it's, at least 30 free days, but I, I think it might be 60. Um, and I always have links to that stuff in my description of my videos, if you'd like to look that out. All right, then I have No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is about a young woman who's trying to drive home through a snowstorm. She's a college student and she's trying to get home for her winter break. Um, I believe there is, hmm, I believe her mother is sick. Uh, it's not super important to the plot, I don't think, but that is why, I mean, it, it weighs heavily on her mind during during this time because she's unable to make it all the way home. The snow is too bad and she has to stop at a truck stop. And there are a couple different people and couples there who've also been stranded in the storm. And she's dinking around in her, with her car at some point and sees a truck. And inside the truck is a little girl in a cage. And what the heck, right? So, I mean, that's what the thriller's about, of course. All in all, I thought that this was interesting, right? Uh, but not something that stuck with me. You know what I mean? I mean, there are many thrillers where it's like, I'll never forget that ending, or this was so unsettling, but I thought that this one was pretty much just one of the mill. It was okay, it was an enjoyable read, but nothing, I think I'd even like recommend to people really. I mean, not that it was bad, but if I'm gonna go out of my way to recommend something, it's gonna be something that I really, really loved. And that just unfortunately wasn't no exit. Next on my list was Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. This was a movie that I've loved for a long time. It was one that I grew up watching. It scared me. My mom told my grandma I couldn't watch it at her house anymore. And my grandma still let me because she loved to spoil me when I was a kid. Um, so yeah, this is much different from the movie. There are some characters here that were definitely very, very bad people and they're not exactly depicted that way in the movie. Um, so this is about a scientist, a doctor, who has found a way with the help of many other scientists working under him to create 
and duplicate, replicate, I don't know, um, they've brought back to life dinosaurs and they've made a incredible park, an amusement theme park sort of to make money and display this. And really it is about making money to um, Dr. Is it Dr. Hammond or just Mr. Hammond? I, I can't remember now, but uh, basically he's a bad guy and the checks and balances weren't heated and things have gone terribly wrong in the park. Um, luckily before it's opened, but there are still quite a few people and visitors and employees there. And man, it's just, it's so good. The, the like fake science in this is so believable and there are fun graphs and things like that in here, if I can find one such as this. So it really makes it um, kind of an interactive um, book at some points because you can look at this like data that they have and it's just really fun. Um, it was such a great book. This was a five star read for me and I'd really like to read um, the, I think, is there only one or two in that series? I don't know, but I'd really love to get to the next one. I also read the Descent by Jeff Long, and this was very, very close to being a five-star read for me. I'm not sure if I talked about it. I don't think I really talked about it when I reviewed this book, but it wasn't quite a five-star read for, there was mainly two reasons. And uh, this book though is about, is about these humanoid subterranean creatures that have been popping up on the surface of Earth some of them for hundreds of years, right? And we've created these myths surrounding them, but now it's happening more and more frequently and people are having very strange experiences with these things and eventually the government gets in on it and we find out that there is just a large population of these subterranean creatures living in tunnels under the earth. We end up calling them Hadles. Um, because the Hadal zone is the deepest, um, most unknown part of the ocean. And these are very deep dwelling, unknown creatures. So there's that. And then there's this plot where there are expedition teams going through these tunnels. Some of them go under the ocean even, like it's so far underground. It's um, really interesting. And then there's also this subplot where these group of scholars are together and they're thinking that with the discovery of these creatures that they might be able to link that to a real, I don't know if person is the right thing, but a real creature that is what's, what the myth of Satan was based on. And that was so interesting to me. It was just really unlike anything I've ever read before. The thing is, is that um, the reason I didn't give this five stars is two things. One was that there were many times where I felt like the writing was purposely vague and I just had to go back and I had to read certain excerpts over and over again. Like I couldn't tell if it was me being dumb or if it was the book being too smart for its own good. And the other thing is, is that there is a character here who um, is a nun and there's just this very white savior thing about her um, in the work that she did before and also the work that she's doing on this expedition where she's treating the people she's worked with in Africa and now these underground Hadels like, uh, they must be stupid because, <laughs> I don't know, because, I don't know, there's just a white savior thing about it. Like a white person comes in and they're the smartest and the best and they know better and they're going to save everyone kind of a thing. Um, and I didn't, I don't know, it wasn't super egregious in my opinion, but it was definitely there. And that is me as, you know, another white person. I don't know if I'm being overly sensitive to a population who might not think that that's a big deal, but it was there and I thought it was pretty uh, obvious. Next is The Cypher by Kathy Koja. And this is the first of her books I've read. This has a really, oh man, it really was kind of like The Descent, unlike anything I've read before. This is about a young man named Nicholas and 
a woman. He kind of pines for the entire book named Nakoda. Basically, none of the people in this book are really likable or redeemable in any way, which is kind of what makes it more interesting, I think. Um, but basically, there is this strange hole in the storage room of the apartment that Nicholas lives in, and his friend Nakoda really becomes obsessed with it, and on accident, one day, Nicholas, his hand gets put into the hole, and when he comes out, there is like a black hole in his hand. I just, boy, it, like I said, it's unlike anything I've ever read before. And I don't know if I loved the book, but I thought it was so interesting. It took me a really, really long time to read, which always kind of, I don't know. I just have a hard time sticking with books for that long, especially if it's a short book. But I thought her writing was so interesting and the plot was so bizarre. And I'm glad that I finished it, but I don't think that it is one of my favorite books ever. But I think that this might be a book that every reader of horror fiction should read. It has great body horror. It's got such an interesting idea and there are very interesting relationships between the people in this book. And I don't know, it's not my favorite, but it was really such a trip. And then last but not least is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the beginning of a um, series. And this has a really weird setting and I can't really explain it to you because it's not explained very well in the book. And that was the reason why, part of the reason why this didn't end up being a five star read for me is so much of the setting here is unexplained. I wasn't able to visualize it and it made it really hard for me to know what's going on, um, which is really important, I think, in this book. This is about these women on, um, they're from the ninth, the ninth house and they're the last house. So there are eight other houses and I believe that all of these other houses are actually on like different planets. And then they all get invited, the heirs of these houses, they all have a champion and Gideon is chosen very quickly as the champion for her house, even though she's not really been trained for it. Uh, so they go, all go to, I don't know, do this kind of a contest on a different planet. It kind of ends up being a murder mystery. And all of these houses, they all have people who deal with different sorts of magic. The ninth house specializes in necromancy, but there are others who do other things. And uh, so yeah, it ends up being kind of a murder mystery, but they're in this, I think it's kind of like a manor, but I keep saying like kind of, and I think because it's not explained very well and it's not detailed. And so I was left with so much like blink in my head and I, I, I have to be able to visualize things when I read, otherwise I just can't, especially a book where there are characters moving around this place, you know what I mean? And I could not visualize it. It was so hard to visualize, which really, um, I don't know, this could have been such a great book otherwise. I still really liked it, but it could have been so much better if only the author had detailed the setting, you know what I mean? And and fleshed it out more thoroughly, but I was left really disappointed in that aspect of it. So I don't know, I mean, it was good. I really loved the characters in this. They were all really fantastic, but that was the most fleshed out part and the setting was left just, it was like, there is a door down a hallway. And it's like, that is not enough for me, I don't think. So there's that. It was a pretty good book, but it could have been so much well, everybody, those were the 10 books that I attempted to read that I thought would be five star predictions. How many were five stars? One, two, three five star books out of the bunch. That's pretty good. I think last year I also had three. So, I mean, not all of them were flops, but will there ever be a year where all of them are five stars? I, pro I think probably not, never, ever, ever. Anyway, I hope that I can convince you guys to pick some of these up because some of them were really fantastic. I'd love to know if you read any of these and also, if you had any five-star predictions that were actually five-star reads for you, that's all I have for you today. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.